All right, cool. So welcome to Nomadization Podcast, Episode 5, where today we're going to give you some fiery takes on what is non-negotiable for us when it comes to us to like to buy or to use a bag. Like These are the features we got to have. We're going to talk about tech pouches, slings, EDC bags, travel bags. And if you have any non-negotiables when it comes to your bags and you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to let us know in the comments below what those non-negotiable things are. Today I have uh, two guests. I have uh, Bo Ismono. Needs no introduction. Bo, how you doing today? Pretty good. Thanks for inviting me again and thanks for meeting you both again. Awesome. And on the other side we have uh, Avishai and and I, and I think his family can be heard in the background yes. as well. We got we got the whole we got the whole crew. Oh, but um no, it's all good. Uh, yeah. the, the more the merrier. But um <laughs> It's funny because about a year ago, I'm, I'm I'm proud that I respond to all my comments on YouTube. And about a year ago, this 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 YouTube, this YouTube commenter kept coming up, and he kept bothering me over and over again. And then he started bothering getting me on Instagram, and then on WhatsApp, and then it blossomed though into this beautiful friendship where uh, me and AV have been uh, chatting a lot about bags. We've gotten to know each other really well over the months, and like. Avishai, just, I've always been impressed by your bag knowledge. And when I was starting this podcast, I was like, I want to have you on to talk some shit, talk some bags. So welcome to the pod, man. How you doing today? Thanks, man. I'm great, man. It's nice to know that my uh, bag sickness got me to somewhere, something important. So uh, I'm on. I'm all on board. <laughs> I, I like that. that. That's a good call. Yeah, because oftentimes it just ends up in, in a bad place where we're losing money. But um, it, it, it opens some doors for you. So you can, yeah. well, you can tell the wife, you know, yeah. I mean, this is a good thing, babe. You know, like it's just moving us <laughs> yeah, forward. That, dude, this is a Saturday and we're Jewish. Saturday is like a, a day where, where we don't do anything. But I'm like, oh, hey, it's it's a podcast. It's. From, uh, it's international, you know. I hey, have to market it for her. I, I appreciate you make. I appreciate you making the sacrifice for us. We'll try and keep it fast for you. It's gonna be today's. A, today's sort of a sacred day where I am too. I'm in, I'm in Hong Kong, and it's day one of Chinese New Year. So, um, oh, I, I had lunch with the family, and then I whipped over here to my office real fast to shoot this. Then I'm going back to dinner with the with the in laws because uh, this is like the most important day of the year. So we all got. Uh, different things going on. So let's jump into it then. Um, so like I said, cool. we're going to be talking about like non-negotiables because, you know, Bo and I, we reviewed a lot of bags and AV, you, you know, you, you got quite the collection, dude, and you're always getting new bags and, you know, trying new bags. But I feel like for all of us, then it's, we've got to have like these core features for different bags that are just like, like I said, they're non-negotiable. It doesn't mean that if a bag doesn't have one of these features, I hate the bag. It might be good for somebody else, right? But for me, like, it just, it's not going to pass the checklist test. Um, so that's what we're going to chat about today. And we're going to start by talking about tech pouches. Um, and basically, I got a little list. Did you guys, um, like, list out the things that are important for you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Definitely. All right. So we're going to talk about the must-have features that we have for different types of bags and we're going to start with tech pouches now Bo I want to know just list them off two or three three max what are the must-have features for you when it comes to a tech pouch and then we'll go in and talk about it in more detail that's actually for me fairly easy because most I feel that most tech pouches are catering towards Apple um, enthusiasts let's say it that way so meaning a, sm a very slim mouse like the magic mouse and if that mouse fits in every single space however i am a user of the logitech mx master because i work a lot on the computer i need a I need something a little bit I'm more with exactly, you. Avi. And <laughs> I, I need something that has a little bit more heft and fits better in my i have small hands but still on the magic mouse i tend to cramp up a little bit so the tech pouch needs to has, have some space to actually fit that MX Master. And not many tech pouches, to be quite frank, um, allow that. They allow it in a way that you can kind of put it inside in an in available space, but not into one of those dedicated elastic slots, usually. But no, I, I love your passion when it comes to mouses, and uh, you, 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 you love mouses, and you, 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 hate, you hate these guys right here. But let's just, just, just lift it, list, list it off for me real fast. So what are the oh, actual fast. two okay. to three things? Yeah. yeah, okay. So big enough for thicker items like the Logitech MX Master, not too big and not too bulky, though, because I love the Evergoods uh, CAS2, but sometimes it is too bulky. 
I wish I already I already talked or I sent Evergoods a DM and said, hey, make a smaller one of the CAS two, please. <laughs> Okay, not so CAS one. That's not not not, not, not the CAS one. Got it. So just to clarify, Bose list for a tech pouch must be big enough for a larger mouse, a, a non a, a non magic mouse, mouse. Yeah, a thicker mouse, mouse. Thank you, a beefier mouse. Yes. Uh, it needs to be not too small. And what was the third thing? Uh, but not too big and bulky. Not too big so and bulky. Yeah, because most are either too small because it's for Apple products, or they are just too big and too bulky. All right, so Abishai, what about you? What are some must-have features when it comes to a tech pouch? List them out, two or three of them. Okay, so for me, I look at a product in a, in a different kind of aspect. Like, I want to mm -hmm. know how it feels and how it looks. This is something, I, I look at a product from an artistic point of view, let's, let's, just, let's just say. I'll take this for example. This is the Bellroy Cariology Edition uh, tech pouch. So what drew me into this is first the black on black aesthetic and I love how YKK AquaGuard zippers look. So that was one of my main draws. But the thing that closed the deal for me is this. Because here I feel like they took the interior design and put a lot of thought into it. From the pocket, pocket layout, the colors and the whole experience magnets and what you call it. So this is the second thing. I love thoughtful organizations, especially in these kind of products. It All doesn't right, so, have to be... So what, one yeah. is the aesthetic, two is thoughtful organization, is that right? right? Right. Okay, cool. Just making sure I'm with you. Right. Yeah, sure. Um, and the third would be amazing materials. So this kind of nails all of it, in my opinion. <clears throat> Even though I'm not using the same thing all the time, but this is my prime example of a of a of a spot on tech pouch. Now that's interesting in because well, first of all, a fine choice in a tech pouch. I, I I've used that tech pouch and I absolutely love it. Bo, what's your go to tech pouch right now? Then is it the is it the the Cap One? No, the Cap Two. It's Cap Two. The, okay. Yeah, it's still the Evergoods Cap Two because it is the most easiest to load in terms of the bulkier items but mm. that one is just it is too big or it's slightly too big and bulky therefore i would love a cap 1.5 little little in between her right best yeah. of both worlds yeah because, because i don't know how to utilize the cap one i don't know how to use that to be quite I, the cap one it, it, it's like a desk caddy right it's a yeah, half desk caddy that can it's only it's for me personally it's only useful for really flat items like a notebook pen cables but yeah but then my mouse and my charger don't fit anywhere so i rather use the cap 2 instead of the cap 1 plus a mouse that is laying <laughs> outside in my backpack um so yeah, for me, the cap one is great, but I don't know how to utilize it for my loadout. Well, Bo, we're on the same page. I'm also using the cap two, and I, I, I've been trying to get off of it. I've been trying to try other tech pouches, but I just keep going back to it. Yeah. But the Bellroy that you have as well, uh, AV, is a, it's a strong contender. For me, when it comes to a tech pouch, uh, it's got to self-stand. Um, that's like, I'm really loving this whole like desk caddy slash tech pouch fusion revolution that's happening right now, right? Whether it's the Evergoods Cap 2, the Bellroy desk caddy, the Alpaca Vertex pouch, right? There's a lot of different options out there. Yeah. And um, yeah. I just, uh, for me, like the ability to stand it on my desk and just pop it open and everything's there. It's a killer. So I, well, I got to follow my own rules. So my list is self-standing, <laughs> not too many pockets, and it's got to fit my moleskin. So those are sort of my three requirements. Some are more design aspects and some are just really personal, right? Like I always, like, let me get my cap too. I always have like uh, moleskin with me and I just like to put it in my tech pouch, right? So I got the cap two right here, moleskin yeah. fits. It's, it's a make or break for me. So, you know, for me, it's got to fit the moleskin. For you, Bo, it's got to fit your specific mouse, right? Your non magic mouse mouse av any 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 like specific bits of gear though that like that need to fit in your tech pouch for you well i'm not carrying like in my mx master it's mostly in my um in my studio um it will need to carry um an external battery but a beefy external battery like um, a 60 watt that can charge your laptop 
Um, it will need to fit my my brick, my charging brick, which the Bellroy does actually. But at this moment, I'm actually using the Peak Design for different reasons. Um, but th these are the main these are the main issues. And I, I I'd like to have organization for my cables, where I could just yeah. pop them op uh, yeah. off and on. Um, and they don't get rambled like Aaron's way of carrying cables. Like I get sick every time I see his reviews. You know, his cable gets all, <laughs> all muffled. This is not me. I have OCD in that department. I need it to be hey. tight. He yeah, so, but 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 Av thinks that uh, it's wrong of me to put cables in this part of the cap too. I think it's a worthy location for the cables. Quick access. I'm using my cables a lot, so I want them quick. This is the, the mini version. Yeah, I told you I'm a sick person, but th this is what yes. I expect. You see? Okay. Absolutely. You, you, you like the, the cables in their actual like elastic designated pocket, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I feel you. I store my cables in here, but I have the middle thing. I'm, all my cables are tied up. I always tidy them, um, and then I put them here, here in the space. But I do not use um, the elastics for cables because I feel it wastes too much uh, space. Because when you have two cables sitting in the elastic, they're sitting like this, right? But if they are in the pocket, they are sitting like this. So I, I'm using much the space much better. That's the reasoning why I prefer putting them in here instead of putting them into elastics. Uh, but I get why you want to keep them organized. That's why I always use these Velcro uh, cable ties. Aaron, you sh you need to buy these cable ties. They are yeah, see, it's, fu they it's are funny. It's funny. We're uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I've seen them before. We're, we're, we're the three of us are on the full spectrum. You have AV on one side, who's like next level hardcore OCD. Everything is perfectly organized. Bo, you're kind of in the middle. You got them wrapped, but you'll throw them in the in you know in the non cable compartments. And me, my tech pouch is more like anarchy. It's just anything goes. It's uh, it's it's the free it's the free market in there. Just the way I, I like it sometimes. I mean I. I am a little OCD in many ways, but I'm cool with just kind of throwing cables in one area because I just take them in and put them out. But, but Av, have you tried the Evergoods Cap Two yet? I never tried an Evergoods product actually. This is one of the, and I have reasons for that. I, I saw your your podcast about Evergoods, and I agreed with Bo so so much on everything he said about it. Pedestrian. <laughs> but that, that was that was the word. That was, yeah, well, that was the word, word. exactly. I stole that word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was uh, that was the word of the pod. We 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 brought that one up a few times. Yeah, Hello, I know. Word. But um, yeah, Bo, uh, Bo, I mean, you're, the, what, what what sentiment in particular? Then we're, we're I want to double click into that, Ab. What what about Evergoods? Are you hesitant about? Well, I feel that the price to the product ratio is like price and product, not because the product is bad, but because I think they values them themselves a bit higher than what a normal person would not because the products are bad but because the value i don't see the value in what they're asking for <clears throat> like design I take yeah in interesting take though. their design in my opinion is mediocre at best mm -hmm. i believe their build quality and the user experience is top notch no i i, I won't deny that they have fan base they have uh, a cult base actually uh, so, yeah, but I don't know how to point my exact finger. I feel like the whole product I'm getting from them, for the same money, I would enjoy a much nicer product from a different brand. Well, you you put an emphasis you put an emphasis on aesthetics for you. So is it just an aesthetic thing? It's just not something that visually speaks to you. Not just an aesthetic thing. It's first of all, if we're if we're going into this uh, into the the EDC category or the EDC backpack category, then yes, I think aesthetic is the like fifty percent of my of my choice. Like a bag would really need to justify itself in terms of everything else if I would make a consideration. If it wouldn't be a, a sexy bag, you know, mm -hmm. but if a bag nails nails the 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 aesthetic, like black amber, for example, it's like okay, I gotta have it. Okay, that's well, that's and then funny I'm going to be disappointed. Okay. Bo, Bo, he's speaking your language because you're also Black Ember. You know, you're, you're you're a big fan of Black Ember yourself, right, Bo? Yeah, exactly. So, but I but I do see that that was my question. What is your 
visual appeal where you gravitating towards and uh if you're saying black amber i kind of get what you're saying in terms of why you why evergoods is not your cup of tea i kind of get it yeah I'm trying to look at it actually at an objective po point of view. Like I, I, I understand why, why people like it, but at objectively for a bag that has their set of features for the price they're asking, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Like also, by the way, Black Amber is also guilty of this. I have a love-hate relationship with Black Amber. <laughs> yes. I think they are pioneers. I think their design is the best looking bag like ever in the EDC market, to my opinion and to my friend's opinion also. Uh, they, ha they have innovative things like their, their fabric, the RN66 fabric is, is killer. And they have mm -hmm. so many little things that are very unique to them. But again, as a product as a whole for what they're asking, I don't see this justification. Like I wouldn't go to a friend and tell him, dude, you gotta have black amber. It's, it's the best of, uh, of everything you can get. No, it's like, Okay, in Black Amber, you're going to get one, two, and three. But in that money, you can get a, an amazing Bellroy, even Peak Design, I think is a much more value to money ratio, to my eye, at least. Well, that's interesting, A.B., because it seems like, so I, I see what you're saying in some perspectives, because we were having a conversation about the Citadel R3, and you were saying, you just, there's not enough organization for you, right? So is there a correlation for you with, like, features and value? Well... I actually have it right, right behind me. Right, so R3, okay, the R3, right? I got a 25 liter. Why did I get a 25 liter? Because it looks the best. It has these little things here, the metals. I think it's, it's the best looking bag of the bunch. But when I got it, I did not realize how huge it is. Because in the marketings, it makes you seem that the 25 liter is a distantly sized bag. But when you get it, it's a freaking travel bag, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, 20, it's 25 liters. That's, that's big for an everyday carry. I mean, we talked about yeah. our everyday carry sizes. Bo, what's your ideal everyday carry size again? 21. 21, yeah. So I, I mean, would you say you're around that as well, AB? You prefer something around the 20 liter mark? Let me, I want also prefix on the, on the liter thing. Liter is a lie. Okay, the leader is a lie and I think the bag community needs to change how they measure bags because look at this bag right here. This is the Troubadour, okay? It's also a 25 liter. It's nowhere near as big as the Black Amber. Mm. You, I like you that. The, point? When you see 25 L on the bag, it's not 25 liters, it's 25 lies. That's what it stands for. Yeah, <laughs> but Perfect, 25 lies. No, seriously. No, well, it's, it's funny. Like, well, first of all, I mean, I totally, the back. it's, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's bigger for a 25 liter. I'll give you that. And it's funny you mentioned that. Cause like, um, Manal, they actually, they begrudgingly measure their bags in liters and there's a big asterisk on their site and they're like measured in liters, but please read this. And they have a whole blog post dedicated to how liters is a terrible way to measure bag size. It's not a true indication of what the bag actually can fit and what it can't. So you're definitely not alone exactly. in that perspective, baby. Uh, I just think that liters is just the best rule of thumb that we sort of use but it's definitely not it's yeah but it definitely should be taken with a grain of salt it's a rule of thumb it's definitely not like an all end you know end all like this is going to show you the ex exact size of the bag because even then a 25 liter from three different brands will pack out very differently a 25 liter exactly. from three different bands will, will, will be able to fit different things and it's it's really uh it's definitely something that's a little bit of a kind of a you know weird ground in the carry community what, what do you think Bo? though do you think that the 25 liter black ember was bigger for a, you know for a 25 liter honestly i'm trying to understand the argument um because i respectfully disagree for me the black ember citadel 20 25 um felt like a very compact bag and i'm I, wow yeah because from i mean i'm a short person so from from my perception of the bag i i think the reason being why i felt it wasn't that big is because it is more shallow it is i agree with you in terms of the footprint the the width and the um the height it is fairly big that is i totally agree with you on that but because it feels much more shallow and the uh, the way it felt on my back I didn't perceive it as big as, for instance, 
the the CTB uh, 26, for instance, which in in terms of numbers is the same size, but the CTB 26 had, from my perception, more volume inside. I was able to fit more inside, but it became much more thicker, and therefore it. It, it's more, for the lack of a better word, it's more like a turtle shell on my back. But this, uh, mm. the Citadel is felt much more streamlined and thinner on my back. And therefore, I did not perceive it as big as the number would suggest, you know. And um, But I agree with you in terms of footprint. The, the overall, if you just stand them uh, side by side and do you look... In a two-dimensional space, they do the citadel looks big, but it didn't feel big. On, I'm only uh, 170, uh, 170 centimeters tall in air quotes. I'm a fairly short person, so it's, to me, the citadel didn't feel that huge on my back. So um, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 Ab, I, any 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 retort on that? Well, <clears throat> look. From uh, I can see where he, where he, where he's where he stands. <clears throat> but I try to fit things into here, okay? <laughs> so my experience with this thing is that, so it has a good and bad side, right? You yeah. can fit a shitload of things into the thing. I'm a musician. I took it for a day out uh, to record a video clip. I had a speaker there, I had additional clothes, I had shoes, I had my laptop, my iPad. I had a ton of things in it and I still had room to spare, mm. okay? So in that aspect, it's good, right? But And then the pocketing, if we look at it as a travel backpack, it makes more sense because a travel backpack, I'm dropping a category here, Aaron, I know, but I'm just gonna... I'll, 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 I'll allow it. it. I'll allow it. <laughs> okay. In a travel bag, what you want to have is as, not as shallow, but I, I'm looking for the word, but like as minimal pocketing as possible because you're mostly going to load it up with pouches, right? You might want to have a small area for tidbits of gear. But so in that department, it nails it. Okay. But then you go back to the marketing and what they sell you. And they sell you an EDC. They do not say this is a travel bag. Now, I, I am a smarter consumer than, than the normal, not because I'm smart, because I'm more into this realm of bags, so I can know my you, way around. You've been around the block. E exactly. <laughs> it's not about intelligence. It's mm -hmm. more about experience. And so I won't say smart. I'm a more seasoned customer. Let's seasoned, say, okay? yeah, yeah. That's the word. So... I know that... I know what I'm going probably to... I'm, I know probably what I'm going to get... I'm going to be disappointed from one, two, three, or four. I don't know, but I'll be fine. But let's imagine this is my first bag. And a friend of mine tells me Black Amber does amazing things. And the 18 liters, which is actually in reality a 22 liter, if we're speaking about how liters are being uh, uh, marketed, it's actually a 22 liter bag. A friend has it, so I know it. And this is actually a 30 liter bag, but this is a different discussion. But... I'll tell him, yeah, get 25 liter. This, you have uh, a larger every day. You have a drone. You have, yeah. But the, the guy's going to be disappointed because he has so much room. It feels like he's not really using the 100% of the bag. It's like it's way more than what he would want. And he could get a better deal getting either the 18 or a different bag because it has a smaller footprint, just the same amount of lid ridge but smarter organization or whatever. That, that's, that's my point. That's my love-hate relationship with Black Amber. It's not this and it's not that. Mm -hmm. They still haven't decided how they're going to market it. It's an interesting and discussion. In and I think um, one thing that we're trying to do on the Nomads Nation reviews is sort of like help settle a lot of this leader stuff. We actually, I got like, like a thousand of these little silicone balls and a measuring like container. We're going to start actually measuring the bags live to nice. see the actual literage. So we can actually sort of put that to the test, you know, because it is a controversial topic. And just by saying the literage, it doesn't always paint the whole picture. So I think that's a really interesting point in general. I'm not sure if I a hundred percent agree with the Citadel. I also haven't used it that much. I just kind of reviewed it more of an unboxing. Um, but hopefully, you know, as Nomad Nation continues, we can start doing those actual, Leaderage tests, but you know, while we're talking about you know 
backpacks, whether it's EDC or travel, I kind of want to transition into then let's talk about, you know, must have fact, uh, features for the EDC bag. Bo, for EDC bags, what are the absolutely must have non-negotiable things for you? If you could list uh, them out, please. Okay. You want to list them out quickly. Okay. So uh, without explanation, quick access compartment, zippered pockets in the lid of the main compartment, uh, for example, like on the Evergoods, Gorok, or others, and potentially a side handle. That's not a must, but a want. Okay. That's awesome. So by that list, you got two must-haves and one like, you know, you'd prefer. Yeah, I would. Okay. We're going to because... come back. On... Oh, go on. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, you wanted the fast list. That's the fast list. Explanation comes later. AV, let's hear your fast <laughs> list. Okay. The fast list. So again, aesthetic first. It has to look very good, very unique. Um, it has to have, in my opinion, either an admin panel or... Again, thoughtful organization, not just plastering a lot of, uh, of pockets, not, but something that is intentional, that it, it, you understand how to use it. And the third, it's kind of uh, many features built into one category. Nail the basics, okay? When I say basics, at the $200 bag, I should get comfort, I should get quick access, I should get AquaGuard zips. Hey, you're, you're taking one category yeah. and expanding it into multiple. That doesn't count. I need... Uh, if, if that doesn't count, then if and then if I have to choose one, mm -hmm. then yeah, it would be comfort. Comfort. Okay, be comfort. so... It has to be comfortable. So that list was then... Right. It was aesthetic. It was comfort. And what was the second one? Organization. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. We got some overlap between these. For me... I'm, I'm leading with aesthetic as well. I don't care about aesthetic when it came to the pouch or the travel bag, but for me, EDC, the aesthetic is the leading point. I need a separate laptop compartment and I need quick access. And those three things are must haves for me. So we all got our list. There's some overlap on some, some not. Bo, I want to start with yours though. So run me through these lists. What, 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 what's the app, what was the number one thing on your list? The must have for your EDC bag? Quick access compartment. Um, quick access. Yeah. Just because I feel that the quick access compartment is useful in so many aspects in terms of either to obviously store items quickly that you want to have quick access to. But more importantly, I it has been a while since I've been traveling, but I think the quick access compartment is the best place whenever you go through a security check at the airport to store your valuables in. Um, but also if you're in a restaurant or something, just empty out your pockets a little bit to be, get a little bit more comfortable, put them in the quick access compartment instead of just throwing in them into the main compartment where it will be difficult when the waiter comes and you need to pay, then you have to rummage around the main compartment. So I think a quick access compartment has so many benefits for a backpack. Um, that is why I think even if it's, empty the most of the time i think it is as the name suggests a place where you quickly can temporarily store stuff or all of the time i love all that we both had quick access on our list av had quick access in his list when he when he like had the the, the subcategories of his one that led to all the others um but AV, <laughs> again it, i mm -hmm. yeah i think it should be a fundamental thing when you buy a, a bag i think it's 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 such a fundamental thing when you buy an EDC backpack that it shouldn't be even discussed, in my opinion. You, you get what? Like, what you can discuss is aesthetic because it's subjective. You can discuss, um, you can discuss features. But a bag in $200 needs to have a form of quick access. It just, it, it's that's, impossible. That's it's why like, I didn't mention comfort. Because for me, it's comfort. Com a two hundred dollar bag. I agree with comfort. you. That's why. But I but Aaron it. put like a gun into my head, man. And said, Choose one. Uh, comfort. Okay, comfort. But I care as much. <laughs> that's the thing. It's funny. No, yeah. And, hey, hey, listen. I had to put you on the spot. All right. Uh, but it was <laughs> no, uh, no problem. I'm glad that I did. But uh, it, it's funny because like I, I wouldn't say though that it's 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 like sort of a mandate with quick access. I think you know if you look at bags like. 
I mean, I guess it depends on what you define by quick access. Bo, you know, you, this is your first thing on your list. What is quick access to you? Is it a pocket that you can swing the bag around without taking the bag off? Or is it like the Evergoods PLC where as long as there's like a zipper on the outside, it's acceptable? It, good question. It's It has, it's um, going back to the Black Amber uh, Citadel that has the front pocket. For me, that is not a quick access compartment. For me, a quick access compartment has... A specific volume that is not too big and not too small because if it's too big you need to run it around so the quick access has to be quick access if it's too deep it's not quick access for me um, then it has to be in a spot that is easily accessible for instance i'm jumping ahead a little bit a travel bag for me has to have a quick access and a secret pocket a secret mm -hmm. pocket for me, although it has the same size as a quick access pocket, it's not a quick access pocket because it's secret, right? So mm -hmm. it has to be in a spot where it is easily accessible and, the, and it's not supposed to be that deep. Because if it's deep, it's an extra pocket. It's an extra compartment. That's really interesting, yeah, because now we're, we're kind of like talking about the criteria of quick access. It is interesting, and everyone might have different takes on it, but I'm, I'm, I'm basically with you. Like quick access, and let me know if you agree, AV, is, um, is, is really – it's a smaller pocket. It's not this big old admin. It's not the Air Travel Pack 3 where you unzip and there's a huge you know, compartment in there that's, that's, right. that's six liters in itself. It's something that's small, and it's something that has intention for your smaller bits of gear that you want quick access to. Uh, would, would you agree with that um, definition, AV? Yes, and I want to be even more specific. Please. It's a combination of time to access the pocket, time to interact with, the, where, with that pocket. As Bo said, if you're just rummaging, it's, it loses its purpose. Um, and the location, okay? Because, again, I really agreed with Bo here. This is a form of quick access when it's standing but when I'm going if I need to take out my bag all the time this is not a quick access anymore mm -hmm. okay it needs to be in a place where I don't need to take the bag off now that would be this compartment here but the problem is it's just a huge sack so unless you put in a big thing then yeah that's a quick access uh, pocket but for the general person and also us I believe I think the, the, the quick access is um is boundaries quick access pocket in my opinion which that one? one nails all now you you uh, cuz you're you're errant. going you're going through a love affair with the errant right now yeah bo uh, av just got his uh, his first errant and he's uh, he's he's having a is it's that not the first. It's not the first. Oh, my, my, my apologies. It's I second. sold my first. <laughs> it was. Uh, I uh, didn't like the color. I didn't like X pack. Uh -huh. I do not like X pack. I oh. do not understand people. Why do you love it so much more than Kodra and uh, Cordura and everything? But yeah, Coming people are going to hate me in the comments. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Right get, get ready for yeah. With hot takes, you're going to get some hot comments. So we, we'll have an X Pack episode <laughs> uh, at a different point in time because that is a big topic. But um, I sold it mostly because it was X Pack. I didn't like the X Pack. Yeah, I, I, I also agree. I'm not like, crazy about X Pack. Uh, it's growing on me. I actually really didn't like it when I first started reviewing bags, and now I'm like, I, I get it um, yeah. more and more. But we'll save that conversation for a different day. So, Bo, we got the quick okay. access part of your list. What was what? What else was a must have for you? Uh, the um, the lid of the main compartment has to have these zippered pockets, like on the Evergoods or. I think most of the bags nowadays have those pockets in the lid. I would say off, it's off uh, the clamshell opening. Bag. Pretty standard. But let me yeah. ask you, Bo, what if it's not a zippered pocket? Like it has to be zippered yes. for you? Because and if you open it up there... too quickly, mm -hmm. things fly out. It needs for to be sure. Zippered. And then is there an ideal quantity of zippered pockets is my final follow-up question. Um, I think the two are sufficient enough so if it's two pockets the reason being why i like them so much is that i utilize the whole vertical space of that bag um, for instance my extended edc pouch that is inside the trackie which has um, cables an extra tool or that that pouch i want that to be, be fairly quick access but it, it's too big to be in a quick access pouch but it's also, it doesn't need to be at the bottom of the bag. So I like to put that pouch in one of those zippered pockets and therefore mm. utilize the whole vertical space. 
as good as possible and yeah therefore i want at least two of those pockets in the lid and what was the third thing on your list bo um put it's a want a side handle the side comes, handle yeah it comes down because i'm a short person if i use a top handle and i'm walking stairs if the back is a little bit longer i always bump against the um the steps when i'm walking up so I rather have a side handle so it's not as low on the ground and it's easier to yeah to sometimes walk stairs especially with travel bags they sometimes bump against the stairs or not bump but kind of gra- uh kind of if that's the stair it's kind of like how you say it in English. I'm not sure what the right word is, but it touches the stairs a little bit. <laughs> it's okay. I get what you're saying. And it's interesting to me that I think it's a really strong list and definitely some overlap with some of the things that I think. But one thing you didn't mention that both AV and I mentioned is aesthetic. Is that just something that's not really that you're looking for in a bag? Didn't think about it? Or you're just kind of like, yeah, well, you're, why was that not on the list for you? It's because um, I was thinking of my must-haves the top three mm. must-haves and i feel that aesthetics is important to me obviously but um yeah i found it so subjective that yeah i wanted to keep it to features instead of oh, the look totally but makes sense and really it's important yeah 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 obvi- yeah definitely i mean but it's interesting just to kind of see because i didn't give anybody like criteria for this list like hey choose from these things just sort of what you felt that you would look for right away and i think an aesthetic is sort of like you know it kind of goes without saying but for me and av we put that both at the top of our list and why av for you why is that like first and foremost at the top of your list when it comes to your criteria for an edc bag how do you choose a shirt <laughs> how do you choose your pants right i see where you're going with this you wear the thing on your back you wear this thing on your back okay you want to you want to feel that you're carrying something good not because people think it's good because you think it's good right it's about personal taste Mm -hmm. i will walk with something that i feel that i can have a connection with it aesthetic is the emotional part of the product right one of the emotional parts of the product if i look at a product simply as a tool then yeah Aesthetic is not really that important. I'll look at, I, I will put uh, quality over aesthetic. Not that I will want to sacrifice quality, but if, if, even if it's the highest fabric, metal, whatever material we're talking about, if it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing to me, it's not relevant. 100% agree. And, you know, and Bo, you and I were talking about this, you know, how much we love GORUCK bags, but it's not an aesthetic that's really working for us right now. And because of that, I'm not really going to be rocking it when I'm walking down the streets of Hong Kong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I agree with you. Aesthetics is um, very important. And I, I'm a very, not a very, I'm also enthusiastic about fashion. So it is definitely something that I look into when it comes to, down to choosing a bag it is it is something that i'm always saying in germany where people aren't that interested in bags that is the biggest item on your body you are your clothing look awesome you have a great fashion style and then there's this ugly bag on your back don't get it so but it is for me just as comfort it is a personal given or that you will obviously choose something that looks good so I just didn't put it on the list. It was just I was just looking for features. No, of <laughs> course, yeah. Like I said, it's just interesting to kind of see what everyone's you know lists were. And then I, Av, like when it comes to an aesthetic, what bags are what bags are you vibe into right now? Because I know you've been trying to talk me into Trobador. They've been uh, they've contacted me actually. I'm getting two bags sent to me. I think <laughs> I think the yeah. Apex. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're uh, they're doing a bit of a push you. right now. Um, yeah, let me give you. Uh, this is the Apex. Okay. Now, it looks like a nomadic navigator, but better. <laughs> I don't know how to say it exactly. Mm-hmm. It, I had a nomadic navigator, so that, that would give, it gave me that vibe. You know, here they have the Hypalon or whatever with the logo. So the same vibe, but this is a classy bag, right? This is a bag you would want to wear with a suit or even with regular clothes, but you know, like... Not not your typical everyday clothes, like you like your work everyday clothes. So it goes with that kind of vibe here. Now, 
so this is one of the bags. I, t I switch it between this and the, you can't see it here, but that's uh, a boundary errand. Mm -hmm. Let me just get it real quick. Which color did you get? You got the tan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got the tan. I think, I think it looks the best in the tan. Is that their errand? The Kodra or the tan, not the F. It's the it's the original errand yeah. bow. Oh, okay. Because the the video, yeah. uh, I can't see. Yeah, exactly. So this, I I I like how it's giving off a bit of adventurous, but not like Indiana Jones adventurous, mm -hmm. like but high techy adventurous. I like it says something. And by the way, this is the bag people stopped me most about to ask, <laughs> maybe because of the color, but that that's the fact it doesn't look regular it looks a bit different that's what i liked about it and it's also about use cases right yeah i'm, I'm gonna interject real fast because i av I, I i i think the boundary supply errant could be the best looking pack ever made um and it's not even my aesthetic necessarily because it, it's not indiana jonesy but it is a little indiana jonesy you know um like it's like a modern indiana jones like if indiana jones had like a son exactly. had a son and he's like like a really cool <laughs> like techie son who still does indiana jones things on the weekend um but like that's nice man. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, but the the aesthetic of the errant i think is one of the most perfect bags that i've ever seen it's it's just it's 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 gorgeous i mean bo do you do you share our our appreciation for the errant aesthetic you don't uh, seem quite sold yes uh, I, I love the Aaron Pack Pro a lot, um, and I like the aesthetic. I'm just I'm on the Boundary Supply um, website because it has been a while since I reviewed the Aaron. I specifically remember what I disliked about the Aaron, and it's so funny that we talk about this uh, in this podcast. But because we talked a lot about volume and uh, liter size and that's the other way around with this one right no yeah maybe <laughs> i'm not sure how you, <laughs> what you mean with other way around because my like if i complain that the black amber is 25 liter in actuality it's a 30 35 liter this is a 22 liter but in actuality you pack like an 18 yeah, yeah okay then then we talk that's one yeah, of the problems with I, it yeah i agree with you that was my complaint about the bag because i was not able to fit that much stuff True. into it um, and there were some l small design feature design choices that I did not like I remember now like the magnetic, it's very strict um, the magnetic thing the fit lock on the laptop compartment annoyed me a lot because the strap was at at least back then was so short that the the closing always it's still short yeah <laughs> close before you were even able to put your laptop in it closed up and then i was like no stay open <laughs> it always closed um yeah but i do like the aesthetic aesthetic i think the pro looks better though I, I loved how you worded that, AV. The, the bag is, is strict, and that's that's a really cool way to put it because it is. It's a very strict bag. You're getting yeah. uh, an aesthetic masterpiece with a bunch of quick access and great features, but it's it's very prescriptive in a lot of ways. Exactly. And it definitely – it's advertised as a 22, but it do not feel like a 22. No. So, But no, we can definitely say – no, no, but um, but visually that bag has got it going on, and your your aesthetic preferences, AV, are interesting because you know you got like the troubadour as like the businessy sort of um, sophisticated side of things, but then you know on the weekends you like to get a little adventurous with your boundary supplies, so you kind of play on both yeah. sides there. But outside of aesthetic, um, uh, AV, what else? Uh, what else was on your list for EDC must-haves? Okay, so an admin panel or some thoughtful organization. Now, I wish I had it here, but Alpaca is the prime example of this. I had the Alpaca Elements Pro. I sold it because I'm a bored person who buys and sells. But what I liked about it is the admin panel. It's just perfect. It's perfect because not just the pocket layout, but their design. The, the rip stop, like how you open it. I, I, I think I talked to you about it with about your back, the Firo, like what would what I would expect in that price range. You open and you feel like you're in a limo. You, you, <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say? Like you open it. 100%. Also, speaking about alpaca, I don't know if you two noticed, they put some smell into the product. Looked into the vertex, you'll smell it. Seriously, they have a, they have a special odor, like Apple does with their product. You open their bag, it's like, and, you, and, le, and like you get this admin panel and everything, it's 
it's so fine. I don't know. This is a this is an example of how to how to organize, how to make an organization in a bag. In my opinion, for sure. I'm not sure about you. I'm not sure about your experience with Alpaca Bow, but um, I've been doing a lot of their bags and. Um, their, you, you nailed it, A.B. Their admin compartment is just gorgeous, especially on the elements. I mean, it's 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 sort of set up like the air. Um, you know, you unzip. It's a little bit more of a square than a full circle. And you unzip, and it's just like, ah, like this heavenly sort of compartment with this gorgeous uh, honeycomb ripstop nylon. Um, it's a very beautiful, creamy, like off-white. And uh, it just like, like you know, and again, A.B., you got a good way with words. It feels like you're – it feels like a limo. And um, it, it's just very well presented from that perspective. Um, but how's how, – by that by that logic then does the, does the troubadour have a nice admin compartment or yes but yes but let me let me just show you okay right now this is my daily driver but that's going to change when i get bored again but mm -hmm. okay so problem 1 two bottle compartments Great for umbrellas and stuff, but terrible for access. I'm not a fan of two water bottles, but that is just me. Mm -hmm. But just, can you see it? Can can you see what I have here going on? It's a little blurry, but I I, 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 I got I got a visual on it. A little better. Can you see? Yeah, it? we got we we got a pretty good okay. idea. Never mind. It nails the pockets. You have, you have the pockets for everything kind of uh, vision. You have the nice logo here, but the color is a bit too dark. And I have a problem with that. I'd like a bright interior. It's, yep. it's bright a, interior. It's a much more it's... premium. It's a much more premium experience when the whole thing is dark and then you open it. It makes the bag feel larger than what it actually is for some reason. I don't know why. But when it's all darky, it's like, it misses that. But the feel of the materials is very, very nice. So I will give them that. You know, so, Avi, you, you brought up something really cool there, too. I never thought of it that way. But I, I agree. Having a brighter color interior, it kind of makes the bag feel bigger. And it's not. It's just this optical illusion as to where you exactly. can see it, as opposed to a dark black hole where yeah. the, the space is more difficult to sort of uh, perceive. Um, when it's brighter in there, it just, it just it has so many effects, and one of which makes you feel like it's actually yeah. got a bit more size and capacity than it actually does. Yeah, That's a cool observation. Exactly. That should have been It's also a calming actually. effect because you see your stuff. You see mm -hmm. your stuff clearly. You don't feel like you, it's like something in the back of your head. It's like when it's dark, it's like, okay, I have to look into it a bit. Like you're not even noticing it. But when it's bright, it's like, okay, I know where everything is. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It's weird, but yeah. No, it totally makes sense. I think uh, I'm actually really excited to get some Trebador gear. Uh, Bo, you said they're going to be sending some your way as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right, awesome. I'm looking forward to us kind of chatting about that because they're definitely uh, they're definitely a, a good brand, up and coming in a lot of ways. So I'm really excited to check them out. Yeah, and the owner, I've spoken to the owner a bit. He's a good guy, man. Like they, they are very down to earth. They make like very premium, you know, like European style, very um, uh, very European products, but very European, very chic. But the guy is so down to earth. Like I had a problem with the bag. I had a question. He's the one responded. We were talking even more about he wanted to know how I, I feel about it. It's like, I like when companies do, uh, do the thing, like when they care. Oh, when for sure. Care. I mean, yeah, so, that level of customer service goes a long way. There's so many companies out there that when you when a company goes that little extra further to make a connection, like it, it's really, you know, it can be resonating and that can last the the test of time. I want to um I want to keep the combo moving, though. Um, So we got uh, we got pouches. We got EDCs. Bo, slings. Give me uh, what's what's uh, what's the list of must have on slings for you? I'm still searching for the perfect sling. The Bellroy sling was um, great. It was my was my favorite last year. So, but but now going to the quick answer. Um, so one to two liters in volume. Small loop on the outside to be able to attach a carabiner. Zippered compartment inside the main compartment. That's my list. I like that. That's three very specific things. Um, all right, we're going to go into those in a second. Yeah, but I, that's perfect. AV, what about you? What are the three things, two to three things a sling needs? Okay, first, the strap needs to be perfect. Perfect aesthetically and comfort-wise. Okay? 
um, it has to the product has to be a bit malleable. You can be able to expand it. You need to be able to expand it a bit, or it needs to shorten when you don't have uh, a lot of things to pack. Um, and how it attaches to your body, that is the third thing. Okay. Um, Strong list as well. The, Very specific. <laughs> and uh, as nice to have, let's say uh, a magnetic buckle is a very nice touch. Not a must have, but it's a very nice touch. And it, uh, it's actually yeah. uh, the magnetic buckle is a little controversial. I don't know about you, Bo, but on, on the Nomadization channel, we get a lot of people who are like, oh, you're just making yourself to be more of a theft magnet. And I don't know if that's true or if that's not true. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if thieves are like like targeting magnetic components versus like other. I, I don't know. But Bo, Bo, do you have any any uh, experience on this side of yeah, things? Yeah, I have. I have uh, an anecdotal uh, experience with uh, a fiddle lock. I don't like them because I'm riding a motorcycle, and you have these big gloves, so you have not a lot of tactical feel mm. with them sometimes. So I was riding my motorcycle and you know how, um, especially with motorcycle gear, it is, it is abrasion resistant. So it is very, let's say slippery. So sling bag tends to kind of slide, more likely is to slide underneath your armpits. So you want to grab the, the strap, right? And pull it back to, to, to the back of, um, of your back. So when I was wearing my, my gloves, I didn't feel where I was grabbing. So I accidentally opened the fit lock while I was riding. Fortunately, I was kind of grabbing it this way and um, pulling it. But then I also accidentally opened it and I was riding at 50 kilometers per hour. So it was a very scary situation where I kind of had to grab the, the shoulder strap so it wouldn't like fly into the windshield of the car behind me. Um, that's why I will never ever use a sling bag with fit locks anymore. As lo if they are uh, V-buckle fit locks, then it's okay because it's Different much story. more secure. But mm -hmm. other uh, fit locks I will not use on a motorcycle anymore. That totally makes sense. Wow. I, uh, I, 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 yeah. I mean, I think I can say too. Those fit locks are beefy and heavy, and they're definitely not something that I, I prefer on a sling anymore. But like, I do like the smaller sort of magnets. Like what's like it's an adventure uh, two point five liter bow. Is that that's not like the fit lock you're referring to, right? No, I mean all fit locks basically are very. If you don't, if you grab at them uh, the wrong way, for instance, some of those smaller fit locks, when you twist them, they open. Actually, they open up. So if you grab it the wrong way, you can also like with one hand open them. Um, but they are also the alpaca uses them or used to use them where you slide them open. Those are much more prone to accidentally open if you can, can bump against them. So therefore I will not use them on the motorcycle anymore. But I, I do realize that's a very specific use case, obviously. It is, but I think, um, you know, I, I'm sort of in the middle here with you and Abishay, because I, I, I agree, um, AV, that I, um, I, I love a magnet on my sling buckle. Like it just, it just, there's something about popping it on, just yeah. slip, you know, it's like clipping it into place. It feels good, you know? And um, yeah. Yeah. So, but um, I think uh, we, we're, we're going to, Go into the specifics of your list in just a second. Let me list mine out real fast. Um, for me, there's a lot of slings right now that are like, hey, this is a sling that can also be a tech pouch, that can also be a fanny pack. Mm -hmm. I'm not about that. I want a sling that's just a sling um, because then there's no compromises being made on the design and it's the most comfortable sling possible. So for me, number one is a sling only. Number two is no structure. I don't want like a padding on the sling. I want it very malleable and loose. And number three is like some sort of zippered back pocket, which is why you said, AV, there's no such thing as a perfect sling. But for me, the, the, the Bellroy Venture uh, Ready Sling 2.5 liter is as close as I've found. But um, it's have you tested it yet, Avishai? Avishai? No, not yet, but uh, I do have the perfect uh, candidate for my, mine too, like the closest thing, that would be the um, the Air City Thing 3. Like the back community don't discuss the 3, they only discuss the 2 for some reason. The 3 mm -hmm. is amazing, man. The 3 is but incredible. One thing though, this is the only sling with the magnetic buckle that I agree with Bo. It's a sliding mechanism mm. and it failed me more than it helped me. So oh. that 
in that department, I agree with Bo. But just in general, when you put the V-buckle or you put, uh, I don't know, a different mechanism, magnet, to my opinion, is the way to go. Mm. But uh, yeah, but this thing, it attaches to your body the correct way, first of all, okay? It needs to be here, not like the black amber TKS, which is this, you know? And Bo, I, I heard the podcast, Bo agrees with me in this one. He, no, he doesn't like the, the black amber too, and we don't like them for the same reasons. <laughs> um, you said malleability. It's malleable. It's the, it's the, it, it actually expands. It has a gusset here which expands. So we got that right. And it's very comfortable. The strap is very good. So that is why this is the... And it has a loop. For your uh, that, for your points, uh, Bo. That was yeah. That's a good call on that because I wanted to ask you, Bo. Like, what do you clip onto your sling? Like, I, I I like to have it too, but I've never actually clipped something on it. It's it's only it's only when I'm going grocery shopping. I think that's the best place to put your car keys on because I like to usually when I'm up and about, I put the car keys into a pocket. But when you're grocery shopping and you have to carry a uh, the box I, I usually have a like a plastic box where I put all my groceries in. I bring the shopping cart back to the place, and I want just want to say it. I hate people who don't bring their shopping carts back to the to the place where they're supposed to go. I we can all agree people. on that. Yeah, Those yeah, that's are, uh... they suck. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, it. <laughs> bring them back because if you don't bring it back, someone else has to do it, and those and the people that are working there, they are underpaid anyway so just bring that shopping cart back so anyway Preach. You sh <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so i get so excited about that um <laughs> so you bring back the shopping cart and then you have your hands are full right with with your groceries and i don't want to rummage around for my car keys in my pocket so that's why i put it on the outside of the sling bag it's easy so you hold your shopping bags like this so it's easy to just take your thumb and push the button instead of rummaging around and uh yeah that's why i always put the car keys on the outside when i'm grocery shopping not so you're, you're you're clipping cle you're clipping keys you're clipping keys uh but do you ever you, you ever clip anything else to an external lash point like that bo uh when i used to have my uh when my smaller dog was still with us um i sometimes clipped the dog leash on on that now I have a forty kilo dog. That, that's, that's not an option not, anymore. No, but those uh, those days are over. Yeah, Happy was only I think she was four or five kilos, so that was easy to hold or to attach the leash onto that carabiner. When I had a flashlight here and the doggy bag in the other hand. Yeah, so yeah. That just clip clip it right to yeah. the external lash point on the sling. Exactly. You're good to go. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I I'm curious, Av. What about you? Like, are you somebody who likes to utilize external lash points more, like Bo? Because I, I I don't really do it myself, but I want to know like no. how to be better at this. Okay, so you're you're sort of in my boat as well. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> if it can't be inside, then something is fundamentally wrong with the product. It needs to be inside. <laughs> that that's my view. How I view things. It's by funny. the way for the keys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. Go on about the keys. Okay, the keys. What I do is I put a boundary magnet dock and then get like that's it. So, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Where is it? That's a better Oh, it's that, to it's my fine. eye that's a better solution. Yeah. And then you don't need something externally. It has its it has its spot. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be fumbling with the clip that you need to open. It's magnet, so that's the better solution, in my opinion. I, I think um, yeah, I'm, I'm not crazy about external hanging. I never know what to hang externally, but I can say now that I'm making my own bag and I'm taking a lot of requests, people are asking for so many external lash points. Like people love them. So whether it's you know water bottles or keys or dog leashes i'm not sure it, it does have value it's nice to have for those times that you need it but yeah it's something that i've never really taken much advantage over myself we're going to jump to the last um topic though with travel bags uh av i'm going to start with you what are some things on a travel bag feature wise that are just absolute must for you okay so the naturals which is 
comfort. It needs to be really, really, really comfortable. And I, I, I know we, we talked about this too. But this is even a higher prioritization than uh, an EDC backpack because you're going to be loading this thing. Okay, so it's a luggage pass through. I'm less of the belt guy, you know, but you get my point. So comfort. Luggage pass through must, especially vertical, but if not vertical, then horizontal, but preferably vertical. Okay. And pocketing, I, I talked about it before with the black amber, but just in general. Okay, so. A small area for tidbits of gear, you know, when you're on the plane and you need that small battery, you need that gum, I don't know what. But then the main compartment, just the right amount of space for all the cubes I need and a separate lap laptop compartment. So that's what I'm, what, what, what I'm referring to with this, with pocketing. Basically. Pretty, pretty strong list. Right pretty strong list. We'll have some overlap there between you and I as well. What about on your end, Bo? Travel bag, what does it need? Um, travel bag. I'm just want to say I'm always not putting this this comfort factor in it because for me it, uh, it's a given. I I would have put it on there, um, but I just thought yeah it's it should be obvious. So for me a travel bag, fast answer, clamshell opening again, zippered pockets and uh, in the lid, but not too much organization overall because I think for travel bags. I use packing cubes. I don't need organization. So keep the uh, main compartment simple. Quick access compartment for security checks and a hidden pocket for my passport. That's it. Strong list as well. This one. Yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty good. I agree with good. it completely. For sure. And uh, you, yeah, you do mention about the comfort bow. And yeah, that should be like a given, right? All these bags need to be comfortable. But I also put comfort as my first feature when it comes to travel bags because it's just it, – it, it's. I can deal with an EDC that's like, you know, maybe not the most comfortable EDC, but with, with a travel bag, it is just non-negotiable. Like AV said, I'm loading it up. I got, you know, 15, 20, 30 pounds sometimes in there. Like I need that thing to sit on my torso with a sternum strap, load lifters. I like the hip belt, you know, the more comfort, the merrier. So for me, uh, the comfort side, which we can all agree with. And it's, it's cool that we all kind of agreed. Uh, we all like more minimalist travel bags. Like, I think that, you know, there was a time where a lot of travel bags had, you know, main compartment with all these pockets and zippers and places to organize things. And I'm like, dude, get get all that out. It's just more weight. It's unnecessary bulk. It's taking up capacity in the main compartment. I got cubes for a reason, right? So let me do my thing. Just give me the the, the open crater and I'll, I'll yeah. figure it out. But one thing that you mentioned, Bo, which you did not mention, AV, and neither did I – is um, the clamshell opening? Is there a reason you didn't True. mention? Is there a reason you didn't mention that AV, or did like you you just I actually did, your list? I didn't think about it. I, mm -hmm. I didn't think about it, but but I would put it on the list too. It's, As it's a must. I, He's I'm totally adding. right. It's like how did I not think about it? I just added it to my <laughs> list <laughs> right now, so now now it's on my list. <laughs> yeah. If it doesn't open to one hundred and eighty, it's not it's not travel. Yeah. Same I one hundred percent. I 100% agree. AV, run, run me through a couple things on your list again. Okay, so comfort, luggage, pass through, and uh, organization, like both of you said. I want to ask you about the luggage pass through. So, so this is um, this is like a larger travel bag. Like, what are you envisioning? Like, what what literage is like the travel bag for you that we're hypothetically discussing? Again, if we if we give a literage uh, a serious uh, meaning in life, mm -hmm. but. I would say at least 25 for minimal travel and 35 to 40 for like a week long travel. Perfect. Yeah, I think we're all on the same page there. So are you like, wh where's your cutoff for like a travel bag that you'll pair with a luggage or is there no cutoff? Because for me, like, I'm probably not going to pair like anything bigger than a 30 liter with luggage because I'll probably just have all my stuff in the bag. Like, I, I don't know. For me, like luggage is like a combo with like a small travel bag that I'm going to slide onto the luggage. But will you do a larger travel bag yeah. with luggage? Um, it really depends. I usually go like with the trolley, like, you know, a small suitcase or whatever. And on top of it, I put my, my travel bag. But inside of it, I have a sling. So this is how I do it. It's usually on me in the airport because I don't want to have my bag all the time and then slide it out and have all my, um, I don't know, my passport, keys and wallets, whatever, being on a separate bag. Like, I use a travel backpack when traveling, more like a travel companion. 
No, it's going to be sitting on top of my suitcase and it's going to have everything I need when I need it. But the, the crucial things are going to be on me. They're going to be in a sling. And then when I, uh, I get to the area where I don't want to have too many things on me, I'll have space on my travel bag to put it inside there and have the bag over me. You, am I'm, I making I'm sense glad that, here? I'm, oh, for sure. I'm, I'm actually super stoked that you brought that up, A.B., because I've recently like had a revolution in my travel where I started doing a sling with a backpack, and it's been a game changer. Bo, have you been – yeah. do you travel with a sling as well? Or what, what, what's your typical travel look uh, get-up look like? I'm – yeah, it's it's it, for me. It's a little bit difficult uh, to get into that discussion because it's been such a long time since I've been traveling. First, there was COVID. Uh, then there were money issues <laughs> because our fl uh, house was flooded. So I haven't been traveling um, a lot over the last five years. I've been only traveling to maybe uh, my in-laws by car. And with that in mind, packing wasn't that much of a issue because we were driving with a car, so it's not. And it's own in, in air quotes. It's only been the in-laws, so I don't carry equipment or stuff like that, you know. So for sure, yeah. for sure. Well, I can but, tell you what what, what Av is sort of touching on is is next time you do hit a flight, Bo, you got to do the the. I mean, so Av's doing trolley backpack sling i i haven't done that much yet but like uh, at least like if you're doing bag and a sling like basically i love the way Avi put it like the bag is just where all my clothes and stuff are going it's like my it's like my it's like the workhorse right and then i'm putting that over top and then the little things that i need yeah. passport pen notebook phone charger gum snack those little things are just always in the sling with me and uh, it's different. a game changer I did it a little bit different, yeah, because the last time I was traveling was to Indonesia for my Aquos documentary on how to make bags. And I did carry the OneWord Provoke uh, 31 liter on board, plus a check-in luggage. And I was a little bit afraid that people would give me, I'm not sure, can I curse on this uh, podcast? Give me Fuck yeah. Yeah, give me shit. <laughs> I was afraid that the people on the airport give me shit if I carried another sling bag because the one that provoke was already that huge with all of my gear. So what I did is instead I took a little bit of a tech pouch, put that with all my essentials that I need during the flight, like entertainment, battery bank, passport and stuff, put that into my backpack and then took it out and put the huge one that provoke, which did not fit underneath the seat put it up there and then just took the the pouch to my seat. But next time I will definitely go with a sling bag. That would make much more sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean the pouch in essence it does the same exact thing, but you know, you it, with the sling you can just wear it. Um yeah, it's 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 been like a game changer for travel for me recently. Uh AV, you've been doing that for a while or has this been a recent thing for you? No, actually ever had, like for years I've been doing that. It makes much more sense. Why Why would I want my passport in my bag where yeah. someone can just take my bag? It has to be on me. Why would I need to take something out? I would put already the bag, even if it could fit the under compartment, the under seat compartment. I could just go ahead and put it upstairs anyway, unless but I needed it, that over there. How, how is hmm? it with you guys where you are living in terms of the people at the check-in? I feel in Germany, they're so strict with stuff. They they always uh, are like, okay, is that an extra bag? Are you actually want to bring that in? Or they really look at every single bag that you have on your body. And, it's an opportunity um, to make money. Yeah, exactly. So it's really difficult sometimes for me to take the risk because I don't want to check in my camera gear. So I'm tr always trying to be as minimal in air quotes as possible when I check in for a flight and therefore I did not bring I know that you are allowed to have a carry on a personal item but I feel this personal item thing is so weird sometimes with some depending on the person that you go to the check in counter to sometimes they say yeah of course you can that is your personal item but sometimes they say or well, it feels to me like they say, no, that is the only bag that you can carry. Your backpack that's on your back, you need to check that in. For have you, uh, Av, have you, have you had, have you had any problems with that, Av? 
Well, in Israel, it's a bit different. In Israel, they look at how big <clears throat> your bag is. They want to measure everything. They want to make sure the weight is not too high. But um, I had no problems taking um, a backpack and even like a small suitcase. Like I would tell them, okay, the backpack would go under the seat and I have the suitcase upstairs. I was like, yeah, it's fine. I think they're a bit more okay. Where Israel is more strict is like in the, in the security uh, yeah. areas. But, but in the carry things, as long as you're not carrying anything, any, anything um, dangerous, the, for me, I don't know if if another Israeli is watching this and like, dude, this one is a lie, or I had a terrible experience, and I don't know what he had. But I'm speaking. Well, about I mean, my own experience here. That that's a good point. That's a good point, Ab, because you know it, it is based on I feel like personal experience and also anecdotal experience, right? Because at the end of the day, whoever's at that front desk is in control. Yeah. And if they woke up on the wrong side of the bed in a shitty mood, you know, exactly. and uh, they didn't get enough sleep last night, you know, they can make you check whatever they want to. So, um, you know, it's it's really gonna it's gonna vary from person to person, exactly. airline to airline, desk, you know, front desk worker to front desk worker. But I will say, Bo, yeah. in my experience, like the sling, as long as it's small, right? If you're bringing like a bigger sling, like the Air Tech sling too, they might be like, yo, you can't have two personal items because some like some budget airlines, you can't even you have to pay for your carry on, right? Like you get a personal item on a lot of budget airlines for free and that's it so like um what i'll do is like i'm not saying like i'm trying to intentionally be sneaky but i might hide my sling you know like i might put my sling my backpack sort of behind me with the sling back there or i might have the backpack there with like the sling underneath the jacket you know just just to you know just to keep things simple right keep things streamlined and moving for the people behind me um but uh there, there's I, I would say though more or less it's been a way that i've been traveling bag plus sling and it's just been it's been an absolute game changer for me and then also back to the topic then of the travel bags it's Change the way I look for in a travel bag because I used to really want quick access in a travel bag. Now I don't need it. I just need it to be this capsule that like carries my clothes exactly. and a couple of tech pouches and a dop kit, and that's it. And then you just do you, buddy. And then I got the things that I need right here. Perfect. Av, you you agree, agree with that, that uh, sentiment? Yeah, that. And on yeah. that aspect, black amber is very good. That's why I enjoyed using it for travel and for professional, more professional use. Because it's that. Just carry my shit nicely, separate my laptop, separate my tidbits, look good, I'll do the rest. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, the well, 180 know, degrees thing, mm -hmm. the, the, the 180 degrees opening, it has a benefit which people don't talk about it so much. It gives you side access, like a form of side access, not camera side access. And it's mm -hmm. also like a suitcase access. You know, you put it, if it's horizontal and you have 180 degrees, then you'll be fine. You can open it from the side like a suitcase. So that, that is something that was very useful to me in that aspect. For sure, good calls on that. Very, very true. Um, well, it's, it's it's funny. We actually we started this podcast kind of talking a lot about Black Ember. I think we're ta we're going to end it sort of talking about Black Ember as well. So I think that'll uh, that'll bring this to a close. But dudes, thank you so much for kind of you know chatting about this. Uh, I definitely learned a few yeah, things. Man. Anybody who's thank you. anybody. Oh, of course, dude. Anybody who's still listening, um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about any bags or anything, uh, I'm going to link to reviews uh, in the comments, whether it's from me, whether it's from Bo. Uh, we'll have some affiliate links down there as well in case you want to support the channel. Um, Bo, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. It was a lot of Ave. fun. And thanks for meeting you, Avi. Uh, thanks for yeah, meeting Avi, you, thank you. Hey, thank you so much your, for coming on as too. well, dude. It was the first... It was the first Hey, 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 Av, your first podcast. I think you did pretty good. How, how did it feel? You enjoy it? Yeah, man, it felt great. It felt great. Actually, speaking about this, I don't have too many friends I can talk to about this thing without looking weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we we know the struggle. It's like, real that's thing, like guys. ninety. It's it's a real thing. Um, there's there's no bag addiction hotline, so we have to set a podcast to talk to each other about it. Exactly. And uh, that's that's like ninety percent exactly. of the reason I started this podcast, just to talk <laughs> bags with you guys. So, um, all right, guys. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you all for watching. This is Nomads Nation. My name's Aaron, and we'll Thanks, catch you guys Aaron. next time. Thank you Thanks very much. Both. Bye, guys. Bye.